All right, so the first thing we want to do is turn the air off on the back section. If your head does not have this on and off valve here, um, I recommend bringing the head all the way down to the park position and then kill the air on the main FRL of the machine. Next, what you want to do is on all, all your router cylinders, you want to label one through five on your airlines. Here I labeled one B, two B, three B, four B, five B. And on the inside, I did 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, and 5A. That way, when you plug them back in, they'll go back to where they're supposed to go. All right, depending on what cylinder you need to replace here, um, go ahead and label the airline you're going to be removing for the cylinder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the top cylinder for the chisel. So I went ahead and labeled this B and A. If you're brass doesn't have a B and A on it, you could just write B and B, A and A, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then cut the, cut the uh, tie wraps from the airline and then go ahead and remove the eye sensor. If it's an older machine, you won't have an eye sensor on this cylinder, so don't even worry about this. All right, we're gonna remove this bracket bank for the chisels. There's two flat heads behind each piece of brass. If you can't get your Allen wrench in there, you could just push this out of the way. Using a 3 16 Allen, go ahead and remove the two bolts. And this will remove the air lines from the cylinders and just let it hang. So now I'm going to remove the air lines one through five that we already labeled. Push the air line in, push in, and pull out. So I moved all the B's and then come in here and remove the A's, which I already had some removed previously. And then remove the eye wire on your low pressure sensor. Okay, this is shown, this is your Z-axis pulley and I already have the guard removed. So if the guard is on here, take it off. And this is how you can by hand move the screw in and out. By hand, you're gonna wanna move the Z-axis screw back or forward depending on where your head was left. And you wanna line up those clearance holes with the block holes because you wanna be able to get these bolts out. Now that you have your holes lined up on your Z-axis block, 5 16 Allen, I have it on a driver. You could use a normal Allen, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and loosen all four bolts. All right, once you get all the four three-eighths bolts out. You go ahead and pull this block out. If there's any shim behind here, you want to make sure you keep it with this block. This machine didn't need any shim, but other models might have some shim stock behind here. So don't lose it. Make sure it goes back when you put everything back together. So we want to take the belt off the pulley. Um, so you want to loosen the Z-axis motor, servo motor. There's four 1032 bolts on it, 532 Allen and a three-eighths wrench. Just go ahead and loosen them up. You don't need to take the motor completely off. Just loosen it up enough where you could slide the belt loose. And now remove the belt. Okay, there's 532 flatheads. The pulley could stay on. We just need to take these four bolts out and we'll leave the Z-axis screw in the assembly. 3 16 Allen. These already loosened up, so that's why they're not super tight right now. Okay, so once you get your bolts out of the front, you can go ahead and pick this screw up and it gets it out of the machine lip in the bottom of this Z-axis plate and then go ahead and pull back on the head and get it out of that machine box. So now once you got the screw out of the, out of the machine pocket, you go ahead and you can pull back the head 
but you want to watch this first bearing right here. You don't want to come completely off it. Come back about two thirds and then stop. Okay, now that we got the head pulled back and we still have support on the bearing here, we want to support this head. Um, I recommend using a sling, a forklift. If you, don't, if you can't get a forklift in, try to get a jack and a piece of wood on the bottom of this head so you could support it when you pull the rest of this head out. Otherwise, all the weight of this head will be on the two front bearings and we don't want that. All right, when I strap it, I wanna make sure that I have part of my strap along the bottom of this plate, not on the cylinders. All right, so when you, when you support with your forklift or your bottle jack or your floor jack or however you need to support this head, just make sure you don't over support it. You just kind of want to balance to where it was originally and then go ahead and slide the head back until you can see the front couplers of your servo or your chisels. All right, now you got it slid back Depend on what cylinder you're gonna remove. Inch and an eighth wrench, and I'm using a spanner wrench. A 12 inch crescent wrench will also work. Inch and an eighth on the nut, spanner wrench on the ram mount, and go ahead and loosen it. And then continue to thread it all the way out. You want to remove the 490 clevis pin. I have this snap ring already brought up here. I just use my fingernails or you could use a screwdriver. Spin it around until you find the start of it and peel it away by pulling up and then walk it out. And then drop the pin out. All right, now the cylinder is ready to remove. So your airlines are back through here. Just kind of pull out, push forward, and then just walk it, walk it completely out. This cylinder has the magnetic um, eyes on it. The earlier edges might not have this bracket on here with the eye. If it doesn't, you don't need to worry about taking this off and put it on your new cylinder. If it has this, you want to make sure that you measure from here to here on the bracket and match that on the new cylinder. There's a set screw under here that you could take off this bracket. It just wedges on there. And then you're gonna wanna take this clevis off the old cylinder and put it on the new cylinder. Torque to 24 foot pounds. All right, these are bearing sleeves, 25 mil. They normally come with these bearings if they're new. Um, I highly recommend that you get a set from the shop and put them in to help keep the bearings from coming out when you push it back onto the uh, ball rail. Okay, now you want to slide the 25 millimeter bearing back onto the rail. So with the inserts in there, push it up to the bearing and then stop. Give it a little push. If it doesn't want to go, you either have to put some tension on your, your strap up or down. If it, if it starts to go, then you know you're aligned correctly and just kind of tap it and then push it nice and slow and it should slide right back on. 